do you come across um, clients who who compare themselves to porn stars and 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 maybe who watch too much porn and that uh, affects their performance issues because they think that they're supposed to be like Manuel Ferrar or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what I found is that um, there's a whole generation that has used porn for sex education, which is the worst place that you could get a sex education, you know? Um, and a lot of these, um, this generation is so overexposed that they it's like, they're like, what else is there? You know, I've seen it all, you know, and I've worked with people that, yeah, they're on there watching it 12 hours a day, jerking off and then wonder why they can't get an erection when they're with a real person. Like there's absolutely no turn on. They don't even notice when a, a real girl is attracted to them because they're so shut down and shut off from interaction with a real person. So obviously that's an extreme case. But my point is, is that we're creatures of habit. And so how we program ourselves is how our body is going to respond. So if, you know, porn and self-pleasure is your go-to and your 80 to 90% way that you experience arousal and pleasure, then of course, when you go into a situation with a real person, there's not, nothing is going to happen because you programmed yourself this way. And so, and that's what I'm saying, like it can be a healthy expression. However, if this becomes your go-to and your only patterning, then that's, you're going to be your pattern. So it has to do with breaking that pattern. It's like reprogramming your body to experience sensation and to communicate with a person and to want to please them. Um, in my experience, there's a lot of men that are like, oh, I want you to have an orgasm. I'm going to make you have an orgasm. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm sitting there thinking, it doesn't really sound like you, you're, you're not asking me what brings me pleasure. Like you're just trying to do something to me because it's making you feel better. Like you're a man or like, oh, I can... I can do this. This is my self-worth and I'm, I'm a pleaser and I'm, I'm going to do this. But you didn't ask me what I liked. You didn't ask me how to facilitate an orgasm. Like there was nothing about that. Yeah. So it was more about like his badge of honor by right. being able to do his accomplishment by making you make an orgasm less right. than it is about your actual orgasm. Exactly. And because they see this on these videos, they think, oh, I'm going to go in and I'm going to do all these things that I just saw and she's going to scream and she's going to have this huge orgasm and squirt all over the place and X, Y, Z. And then when that doesn't happen, then they're like, oh my gosh, there's something wrong with me. But they failed to ask their partner, what do they actually like and what do they actually want? And I've had all different kinds of orgasms, crying orgasms, laughing orgasms, silent orgasm, screaming orgasm, shaking orgasm, like all of them. And so I think that a lot of times men will see, you know, this screaming crazy orgasm and they miss out on what an actual orgasm can look like and all the different other types of ways that we experience orgasm. So that's what I'm saying. Like, this is not a performance here. This is not something you're doing to someone. It's a co-created experience. Like it's two people coming together and creating something amazing. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.